Today, I'm gonna to be walking through how you can set up your very first LinkedIn ads account from scratch all the way through to live campaign. After that, we'll then go and look in a real world account so I can teach you how you can interpret some of that data to see how well or not so well your campaigns are doing. So stay tuned. If you find this useful, feel free to hit the like and the subscribe button. Anyway, let's jump into the reason why you're here and create your very first LinkedIn ads account. What I typically do is type in linkedin.com forward slash ads, which is ADS. Hit enter. That will redirect you to the business.linkedin.com forward slash marketing solutions forward slash ads um, homepage, which is a bit more of a mouthful. So forward slash ads on linkedin.com works easily as a shortcut. And what you can do then is click on manage your campaigns. Now, if you already have accounts or you've had access to client accounts, this is where all the campaigns um, will show up down here. But I've blurred them out because obviously I have other ones on my personal account. Now, what we want to do, if you don't already have an account, we can go and create one up here. So we click create and click on account. What you can do then is configure it and call it the name of your company or the name of your personal account. Whatever it is that you're doing it for, you can add the name of the account here. I wouldn't recommend creating client accounts. What we typically recommend is if you are doing client work, they create the account and then give you access so they have the full ownership of everything that's going on and make sure that in the future that you know nothing happens in the way that they won't be able to get access to their account. So if you're doing it for clients, I recommend they set it up, give you access, you can walk them through it, send them this video, whatever you need to do. Um, the currency that you guys are in, obviously we're in um, GDP, there we go, United Kingdom. And you can add your LinkedIn associated page. So just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna add our session media and associate our session media company page to this. So, and I'll leave it as Ben's ad account. Let's put a test at the end so we know which one to delete later on. And what we have here is the initial dashboard and we'll go through the process of setting up your first campaign. But ultimately what we wanna look at first is how the campaigns are structured. And if you've used other ad platforms, it's kind of similar, but there are a few nuances. So there's three main levels to the, to the account. You have the account in itself, which we've just created, which is called Ben's Ad Account Test. You then have the campaign groups. These campaign groups allow you to start categorizing and allocating budget towards certain groups of campaigns. I like to structure them with, with regard to lead generation, recruitment, ABM, and have a very top level. If you're doing it in multiple locations as well, that really helps categorizing those. And then when you actually go to a campaign itself, that's when you do the campaign level targeting. So the people from a firmographic and a demographic level that we're gonna be looking to target. And then within those campaigns, you have the ads. Again, that may be quite hard to digest right now, but ultimately we'll go through the process one by one to show you exactly how this rolls out and how it actually starts to make sense and piece together. So our first ever campaign group is called New Campaign Group. And then let's click into this to go into the campaign level. But as mentioned, I can create a new campaign group and call it ABM Test Active from when I want it to start running. And if you want to, if you want to add a schedule and a budget, you can do it here. You haven't got a set of budget, but ultimately it may help you if you're doing some client work or have some internal budgets you want to go after. Again, you can also set this at a campaign level, which is what I typically do to be able to manage it. So for now, I'll just schedule it to run for today, but you can schedule them to run in a future date, which potentially could be quite useful for the likes of events and everything else. And I'll click create. So now we can see here, we've got a couple of different campaign groups sitting within our account. So let's go on the ABM test, which we've just created. And now you can see at the top here, we're at campaign level. So we've got the account level, campaign group level, and the campaigns level. So we're currently in the ABM campaign and let's quick, uh, click on create campaign. And this is really where you started to get into the actionable creating of accounts and targeting side of things. So let's call this uh, campaign test. And you can either um, add this campaign to a campaign group, which you currently have, which is the ABM test, or you can create a new group within this. Typically, we'll just create a new group before starting this process, but if you get a bit more down the line, you decide this is a better process flow for you guys, then you can do it either which way. Next, we click on next. And now we have a few different objectives. And depending on what you guys are looking to achieve, there's a few different ways you can set this up. So typically my favorite ones are website visits um, and lead generation. 
and depending on its job applications, you can click on that. But again, uh, there is a better way of using LinkedIn for that, which I, I won't go into too much into this video. But again, there's all different ways and I won't go too much into the different potential CPC models and how they stack up against each other in this video to bog down. But the two ones I'd say are website visits and lead generation. And the biggest difference between these two is website visits are going to send people to your website. And lead generation typically is when we use the likes of LinkedIn lead gen forms because it allows you then to start collecting and um, converting people within the actual platform itself versus website visits, which will send people to your website. And there's benefits for both, especially when you're starting out. I'd say as a whole, lead generation and the inform or the in form for LinkedIn um, ad forms are slightly cheaper because then not leaving the platform. LinkedIn likes that, so rewards that from slightly cheaper CPCs from what we've seen. Whereas website visits is really good that if you want to get that first touch point on your website, use that remarketing data across the likes of Facebook ads or YouTube ads or other pixels that you have on your site for the purpose of remarketing. Um, so there's pros and cons for both. Again, it probably works to have both in your strategy. As we've evolved over the years, we probably primarily use website visits more because we found that the longevity of the data in other platforms allows us to get a better result in the long term. But for short term conversion rate optimization, LinkedIn ad forms always convert better. But then on the other sales side, are they as ready to speak to a salesperson? So there's a lot of balance going on there and there's a big debate that you can go around it. But again, it's, it's always about the testing and working out which one works best for what you guys are looking to achieve. So for now, let's just do the um, lead generation just so I can show you the informs. And what we have down here is we have the forecasted results. Now, what we'll, what we'll keep an eye on is as we start building this campaign, this will get narrower and narrower. So we've got 34 uh, million plus people at the moment, which is just in the UK. And as we start to narrow this down, that will get smaller and then it'll start giving you some indicative data, which I wouldn't pay too much notice to, but again, they give you general forecasts in how well they think your campaign's gonna perform from a impression standpoint, click-through rate, and indicative leads and, and everything else along those lines. So keep an eye on it, um, but I wouldn't give it too much merit ultimately that's going to become with the real world data that you guys are going to have once you kick off the campaigns. So let's target say a B2B audience um, or an audience which potentially may fit our ICP which is someone who works in B2B marketing or they work at a um, enterprise company or SME company who are marketing to other businesses. So there's a few different ways you can do it and like I mentioned you can do the firmographic and demographic targeting, which is the most, I guess, universally known and what people assume that is the, the basis of most campaigns. But then you can also go a bit deeper and look into things like groups or what people have been endorsed for. And just like this campaign group's called, you can also use ABM data. Now, I'm not going to go into all three different ones in this video because it probably needs its own video about when to use which different type of audience um, match type or audience type of targeting, whether that's the ABM, the interests or group, so like what people are interested in, what they engage with, the types of stuff they've been endorsed for, or whether just going after firmographics is best. In this, I've set up the demographic and firmographics just to show you a top line of how you can start building out your audiences. So if we go into audiences, we can go into audience attributes. And what we have here is we have lots of different ones and let's run through them quickly. So you have company, which is company category. So whether it's one of the fastest growing companies, I don't really use this too much, but again, it depends on what use case you might need to. Um, company connections. The main ones I technically start with are gonna be company industries. Um, if you wanna go the ABM route, you've got company names, which you can go and match, but there probably is better ways of doing it than manually going through and selecting company names. You can upload Excel spreadsheets with the data on it, which is, is much easier once you get into the nitty gritty. Um, company size and company revenue, um, self-explanatory. So actually it shows you, you know, different levels of company size and revenue, which you can target, which again, for a lot of B2B companies and the SME and enterprise is very important because you want to make sure you're targeting people that potentially are in the category that meet your um, ICP or target audience market. So let's go on industries for us to start with. And for us, there's a few different ways we can do it. Again, this one's quite black and white because we've got corporate services. So corporate services are people who target other businesses. And as a B2B inbound digital marketing agency, this is perfect for us. So let's just go through and select. We've got accounting businesses, we've got environmental, we've got events, um, human resources, information services. Now this one probably comprises about 60% of our target audience market. So I'd probably break this down and say, 
this is going to be one that I pull out and have a really targeted um, campaign around, even if, maybe even a campaign group if I want to go mega narrow into tar- targeting um, this category, which I do. Uh, so information services, um, and I won't do recruitment, but let's just let's just build this out. So we've got two million three hundred thousand people in this target audience, and let's close this down and let's narrow it even further. And we have all these industries. So we're now targeting all of these different industries we want to go after. And now I want to start looking at job role. So rather than going on company, we can look at what I'd say is another key one you look at, which is the job experience. And job experience is broken into job functions, seniorities, job titles, member skill, and years of experience. Now, there's two different ways you can approach this. Job titles is a really good one to go after because you can target the exact person you want to target within, in an organization. So for example, you have um, marketing director. Oh, it's nice for marketing. You've got marketing director, director of sales and marketing, digital marketing specialist, and all these associated ones. So let's go global brand director, um, head of marketing, chief marketing officer. And you can see here that we've narrowed it down to 9,600 people now. And we've got head of marketing comms, marketing manager. Let's try and get it to around 30,000, I think. Okay, 23,000, let's leave it there for now. Um, and we can narrow further. So there's two ways of doing this when it comes to job titles. There's one actually going through and choosing all the job titles, which will probably end up with a smaller pool of people, but it may be slightly more targeted. But the other way of doing it is looking at marketing function. And marketing function is in the same section where you go into, you can't do job and function, but if you went into functions, you could say, I want someone in a marketing function and then layer that with seniority again, which we can't do because we've chosen job titles instead of it. So you can say marketing function and they're a manager or they are senior or they're a VP or whatever level it is, or you can have years of experience, which is very similar. What I found is when companies are getting started and have slightly smaller budgets, be a bit more conservative, go with job titles, and then later on you can look into actually going and potentially being a bit broader and categorizing people a bit broader because if you just put marketing function, it may bring in people that are in sales, maybe some in ops, maybe some MDs, whatever it may be, they kind of broaden the net a little bit. We've had varying results on different industries of which ones work better, but work with job title, then go into marketing function and um, seniority, depending on who you're targeting. Next. So now I'm targeting these people in all these different industries. I'm targeting marketers within those spaces. And you can go and do very different ones as well of, of targeting and just a just go on it very quickly. You have demographics here. You have education, if they need to study in certain degrees. Um, job experience and interest in traits. Now, member groups, as I mentioned, are really good to go after. For example, for us, there's a big industry group called B2B Marketing. It's at the B2B Marketing Expo and Awards. And a lot of people who are members of that and engage with that are our target audience market. So we can go and create a group around this feed them content we want them to see and a lot of them are highly engaged because it's something that they're they're really into because they've actually engaged with events very similar in the past and now we are trying to plug into um, their interests and actually provide them with relevant content. Now let's close this down. What I'd also recommend is going through and excluding a lot of the time, say for example, you say I want to target companies who are um, 20 to 50 let's go actually let's go and do that first let's go narrow and let's go on to audience attributes and go on to company and go on to company size so a lot of companies are artists so they say for example if you don't want to go until you're not selling to one-man bands and you have to be two to ten employees to 11 to 50 you can see that it's narrowed it down to about 9,400 people and let's close this so I'm, at the moment i'm targeting this isn't our target audience market by the way but it's just an example we've got these industries here we've got job titles we're going to go after and company size and in the uk so linkedin is telling me it's about 9400 people who fit into that category of person and what i'd recommend doing we found a lot is it still kind of ignores this if it's just 
and attribute and it'll still show it to much bigger companies it'll show it to one man bands so to be really concise and tell linkedin not to do it click exclude and go and exclude um, any audience attributes from a company that have sizes of all the ones you haven't done and close that and you can see here it still was kind of counting them don't know why it does that so a little tip there make sure that you actually negative out some of these aspects because otherwise it will still kind of serve them and before I forget just and always and always I'd say especially when you're starting take this off because it expands it across other networks it's like google's display network in which you're not quite sure where it's landing so we want to just stay on linkedin for now so what we can see is we've got 6,500 people i typically say you probably want a bigger audience than this but again i've, I've done it for um, relatively small companies um and we can see here marketing function 98 percent business development 22 percent so this is people that have probably more than one role or it's like marketing and sales or linkedin's categorized them as both if you target mds or ceos or founders they're always categorized as business development for some reason so if you are targeting them don't be worried if the biz dev looks too high, but keep an eye on the likes of your job titles and everything else. But I won't get too much into that. And you can see here, 30 day spend between 280, 1,000, um, 142 pounds, that many impressions, average click through rate, which is important. So we'll get onto that later. And about four to 48 leads in the 30 day period. But leads are subjective because some people think leads are ebook downloads, some people think leads are um, people getting in contact for a quote or pricing or everything else, which is side of the fence I fall on so if we scroll down we've got now here um, different formats and before I get onto that just thinking audience size I typically try and say if you're getting started try and get it around 30,000 I think under 30,000 you'll be trying to replace ad copy or ad creative way too frequently because you'll hit your target audience market within the month period most likely depending on your budget size this size is good but i'd be prepared to really go and mix up um, the creative this is more of like a remarketing audience size so if someone's already seen an ad been to your website or engaged with your company page you can create ads for audiences which are a bit more remarketing based which is a lot more content I, i'd recommend um, versus first touch point cool so we got the ad formats now and there's four main different types of ad format i'd say um i'm not actually counting messaging ad because i much prefer conversation ad compared to messaging ad i think it performs a lot better in different use cases so we have the single image ad which you probably see in a lot of places you have carousel ads which are great from single image ads we probably found that it has anywhere between a 0.4 to a 0.6 click-through rate carousel image ads on sort of global accounts we've seen around a 0.9 for a good one probably between about again 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 for a decent um click through rate and video ads depends what the video is about but we'd rather look at the view through rate because it actually it actually gauges consumption a lot better than the like click through rate for example so if you actually get a better view through rate than click through rate on video you're winning because ultimately um you're not spending money on all the clicks and everyone's viewing it yes linkedin will start to deprioritize it because their algorithm would be like no one's interested in this if they're not clicking it we're not making money so we will slightly demote it but the good thing is linkedin's algorithm i'd say is probably quite far behind the other algorithms from the likes of facebook and, and other places who will really reward you or really unreward you whatever the word is if it's doing well or doing badly on linkedin it could be doing really well the annoying thing is it doesn't really give you the economies of scale pricing of, of doing well it will stop showing your ad if it's not getting clicks but it won't make it that much cheaper if it's doing really really well but you will see the results on the other end and the throughput will be much better so it's still worth doing it but linkedin needs to catch up and microsoft by proxy need to catch up with that okay so next we've got placements and again i've unclicked this so we've got the audience network you can set your budget here either daily or monthly i normally set it my um, daily um so you can have more flexibility but i have a budget tracker which i use supermetrics for um integration into an excel spreadsheet across all of our clients to make sure that their run rate is sufficient and ultimately it's um not going over it's not overpacing or underpacing so budget here you can select what you need again it's it's hard to set up it's about three thousand pounds a month which i'd say is a really good place if you do have the budget to get really good data but we've seen clients spend one thousand 10,000, 20,000, all different varying levels of success when they've come to us. And there's some traditional mistakes that people see with budget, which I'll get onto in a second. But ultimately, um, budget's going to be indicative of audience size results and what you guys can afford internally. 
campaign start dates, you can set it for the future. Obviously, you can't set it in the past. You can set it in the future. You can't necessarily set, you can set a um, stop date as well, which I'll get onto. Um, start date and end date, if you want to run in campaigns, pre-events, whatever it may be. And this is one of the biggest issues we see a lot of the time. And letting LinkedIn choose your bidding strategy, like most platforms, is not really a great strategy. So what we typically do is take it away from maximum delivery or, um, and this will be the one they recommend, but I'll go to manual bidding. And what you can do is you can look at what people are typically charged. So people are saying that it's £7.66 to £19 per click. And again, you can be quite sneaky and you can say like, you know, even if you put £4 here, you'll still get clicks. Even if you put £4 here, you'll still get clicks. You'll probably get clicks from people who aren't, as, you know, in the senior bracket of who you're going after because it depends how much other people are bidding on that. But you will start getting clicks. You can go lower. If it doesn't show your ad that much, then you can go in and raise it ever so slightly and keep doing that until you found a really good medium of your budgets being exhausted and you're getting good quality leads. But again, play around with it. Don't immediately go straight for the top. The only time I'd say it's worth going really high is if you're doing in-mail ads, which is a really good way of getting cut through on a remarketing perspective from really senior stakeholders. Okay, so that's top line about bidding changes. And finally, let's move on to conversion tracking. Now with lead forms, this isn't necessary, but when you send it to your website, you wanna make sure you can track when people make, take an action. So for example, if someone fills out a get quote form or whether someone um, requests more information or whatever the desired action is that you want them to take, you want to make sure that you can track that and associate that with your campaign ad and the targeting that you've gone after just so you can optimize efficiently. Now I'll create a video and I will link to this um, video on how you can do conversion tracking. There's two main ways. The main one is destination conversion tracking, which is when someone hits like a thank you page, um, for example, an event will trigger, which will then associate that conversion back to the platform. And then also the other one is uh, if you have like an Ajax form and by Ajax, I mean when you hit submit or get quote or whatever the call to action is, it loads on the page and says thank you without going through to a page, which we see quite often in, in, in sites. Um, it's not necessarily the best way to do it from a user experience and a tracking perspective, but there are ways in which you can actually get images um, for Google Tag Manager um, from LinkedIn to, to trigger um, that conversion as well. And I'll go into a bit more depth and how that all works and some more advanced LinkedIn ads targeting. And again, I'm not gonna go too much into the type of attribution modeling, but when you go into conversions within LinkedIn ads, you can actually trigger the conversion window. So for example, we can have a 30 day click window, it's traditional. So if someone clicks to your site and then converts within 30 days, for example, then someone is gonna, um, or LinkedIn is gonna, if it can identify that conversion from that user, if it's cross browser, then they'll associate it to the right ad and everything else. The same happens with view through conversions. So if someone sees one of your LinkedIn ads and then actually does a conversion within the next seven days um, by default, then someone's gonna, uh, or LinkedIn is gonna then associate your ad um, with that conversion on your website. But again, with LinkedIn lead forms, um, primarily we're looking to get that person to fill out a lead form. And yes, if they do come to your site and you do have conversions set up, you'll still get that attribution. But again, it's not the, the primary goal of the campaign we're setting up now. So we created a goal and let's just leave it as a single ad image for now. So look, we can talk about videos and I'll give you some examples of those a little bit later on. Now let's go on next and be careful because when you click next and go back to previous, what you'll find is you can't actually change the type of campaign anymore. So I can't change it to a video ad or message ad or whatever. Um, it will just mean that you have to recreate this group or duplicate it or whatever you want to make sure you can then go and choose the type of content you wanna um, promote. Also, while I'm actually back here, you can save audiences. So I can click save audience and I'll call it like test audience nice audience audience um, and then you can save it and then next time you come in you can then actually just say I want to use this predetermined audience which I've already created which saves you a bit of time and you can also add modifications update it create new audiences and also negative audiences that helps if you want to cancel out your competitors staff reduce the clicks whatever it may be you can start creating these these presets which will show you how ultimately you can start getting quick audience setups for new campaigns so let's go next and now we've gone the uh, campaign or the account, campaign group, campaign. Now it's onto the ads. If you have existing content that you want to promote from your company page, then you can sync it up here. 
Um, um, and what I can do is create a new ad. Now I haven't got any ad copy or anything done for this video. That's gonna be a much bigger topic when I talk about the, the best converting ads and best practices out there to do for the ad copy and call to actions and everything else. But let's just do a test ad, call it test, test intro, copy, destination URL, let's just use the session media website just for now. Let me upload um, just an image of something which is about the right size. What I'll do is I'll put um, in the description the dimensions or a link to where you can find the dimensions for different images. So for example, a static image, uh, carousels, your video images, all that stuff has different um, dimensions you can use because like it can be normal video um, landscape or it can be um, a square, for example, like a one-to-one -one ratio, but I will link off to those. But let's just for now put in this test headline and test this grip chin. So, what we can see here is our ads starting to come together. So in the feed, you probably go down, you can see our company page has been associated here. We've got our follow account here. Test intro copy is up here. Destination, um, and then test here is that call to action. Now, what we're gonna have to do is because we're not going through to a website, we're actually going through to a form. We need to create the form. So you can select an old lead gen form or you can select a new one. So let's create a new lead gen form and call it test lead gen, test headline, test offer. And put your privacy policy on from your website. So let's go and get our privacy policy, forward slash privacy policy. You need that to use it, and then, or you can whack it in there. You can look at questions. So you can look at the default questions, first name, last name, email address. You can look at where they work. But what I like to do is set up some custom questions like, are you looking for tests? And you can do a multiple choice or you can do single line input. You can see when potentially they're free for a call or that's probably better to do for like a Calendly or HubSpot phone link. But you can ask open-ended questions and sometimes it's good to know that make these mandatory. And then um, if you make them mandatory, then what's going to happen is people are going to have to fill out open text fields, which may, may mean that if you want just high intent leads, someone's actually got to put some thought behind submitting a form rather than just clicking and pressing submit. And they can do that maybe by accident. Maybe they think you're promoting a webinar. Maybe they're used to downloads, so they're not used to actually getting in contact with people through this method. So lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, and then the confirmation, so just like when they fill out the form, thanks, um, and landing page URL. And you can again put a little um, learn more and then put a link through to your company website just so they can learn more or any case studies or testimonials or whatnot. Um, one thing I probably missed out was the form details with the call to action. You want to make sure that it aligns with what it is that you are going after. So example, sign up is the default at the moment. So you want to make sure that when you have it, you can do the apply now, download, get quote, learn more, register, depending on what it is that you um, are going after. So you can kind of see that should pop up in a little link down here. Um, and when you submit the form and we look at a, an example of a preview, that will appear in the bottom right hand corner. For some reasons, it's getting a bit buggy sometimes when it shows you um, the ad, but when we go into the actual feed, we'll be able to see it. You can also then put in things like hidden fields. Hidden fields are great for UTMs. Um, when you add hidden fields, um, there's probably a better way of doing this, but you can add in, for example, the source, the medium, all the classic UTMs that you would use through Google Ads and other paid social platforms to see if you can get the best tracking possibly out there. So you can you can go and optimize in short for um, future campaigns and get better results and better CPAs and everything else along those lines. So let's hit create. Oh, two errors. That's good. Let's go debug these live. Oh, let's just bin this. So I started creating a hidden field and it didn't allow me to do it. So let's click create. So now we've got a test form. You can then go and associate forms in this ad. So if you wanted to go in here and edit it, or I wanted to create a new form. Uh, okay, 
So I can see here I've got my new ad. And what you can do is you can create more than one ad. Again, this is a rubbish ad. This is just a random screenshot from a previous YouTube video, which is about the right dimensions. Um, if you have two different ads, what you want to do is click on this here and go on rotate ads evenly. You want to stay away from um, recommended um, option, which is optimized for performance. What we found is LinkedIn, before there's even really solid results, starts to promote one ad, which means you're not going to get the best equal performance metrics off both of them. And it jumps to too many conclusions. And especially if you've got a small budget, it will start just promoting one and kind of really suffocating the other one's promotion. So it won't get many impressions, even if it starts outperforming the other ad in some cases, which I found weird. So rotate ads evenly, maybe two, three ads, um, primarily with whether it's you're looking at copy changes, but I'd probably say the ad um, actual image or the video is the, is the key driver um, along with the call to action. And then you can manually see which ones are best performing from um, the CPAs or CPCs or whatever it is the metric is in the short term you guys are looking to go after or things like consumption rate and view through rate or watch rate of the video. So let's go next. And this is really where you get to the bit here. So you can see we've done the objectives, we've done the audience, we've done the ad format, we've done the placements, and now we're gonna do the budget and scheduling. This is where it will show you the overview. So it's ABM test, continuous running, include um, audience in the UK, B2B companies, pretty much, oh sorry, um, we've got the job titles here of B2B companies of size two to 10 to 11 to 50, um, single ad image format, um, LinkedIn audience network is NA, so we're not doing it on there, just on LinkedIn, £100 daily budget, running continuously, manual bid, we're going to start with £4, remember we're going to check on that to see if it's actually getting the right amount of distribution, if it's not really spending our whole £100 budget, for example, for the day, which £100 is a lot for £4 CPCs in this small audience, that definitely won't. But if, say, for example, it was, we had £30 spent a day and our budget was 10 pounds it may run out in the first few hours because there isn't a day parting so you can't choose what times of day your ad runs it's actually a bit of software we've made but i won't get too much into that but what you can what it'll do you run out really quickly whereas on the other hand if it's just four pounds a day and you've got a big um pot of money going after this audience you may only spend like 10 20 pounds for example and not really get in front of your audience because you haven't got that many impressions and it's lasting all day so ultimately you want to make sure you're testing this and you want to go and look at how much money you're spending cpcs if you feel like you should be getting more impressions or i may put four pounds out there in the um, bidding and they decide that it's nowhere near enough so we're only going to get like 10 to 100 impressions in the first day which means i know i need to go in there and up that and get a bit more in line with um, the cpc suggested by linkedin themselves no conversions added, as we mentioned before, I'll create a video around that. And what we'll do here is we'll have a quick um, overview of the ads or ad in this case, which we've created, which I'm not actually going to launch. And I'm guessing I'm not going to launch it now because I haven't filled in the billing details yet. So here we go. So you can either do this, add your campaign. There's no save payment message. You can go to billing center here and let's go and quickly, you can add in your credit card information. I'm not going to do that. You can also go up here and go into Billing Center um, and you can create, add your billing stuff right at the beginning if you're not doing any of the campaigns and whatnot. So let's go back to the campaign we created. So we got here the ABM test, we've got the campaign test, we've got the ad here, and you can go on to edit this ad if you want to go and do it again, or you can just click on this and it will show you what it's like in the feed. So we've actually got the apply now um, a sticker that we had um, on the call to action, which wasn't appearing in the preview, but it's appearing here. And you've got test intro copy here. So this is you know, a very bad ad, obviously, uh, but it just shows you how you can get this ad live. Takes you through the process, setting up an account, associating that account, creating your campaign groups with the objectives, creating your campaign with the audience and the ad type, then going through to actually creating your ads and then reviewing the whole thing, setting up your billing and then putting it out there. So this is very top line. If you want to go and send this to people, you can go here and copy link to post and you can send it to whether it's your clients, internal management team for approval. Uh, some of the time it doesn't show the call to action at the bottom when you send it across. It's very weird. It doesn't have like that sometimes um, and it won't and you can be able to test the form that we created here um, with our email address from LinkedIn. What are you looking for? Um, more leads is usually the answer. 
Um, so pretty much that's how we uh, create our first campaign from scratch. I mean, I didn't go too much into the groups or the remarketing or the different types of targeting creatively, but I just wanted to give you a very top line overview of how to get up and running with LinkedIn ads in the most efficient way and making sure that you're not hitting any of the obvious mistakes, which we see in a lot of accounts like ad optimization, bidding too high, audiences being too big, going after the wrong, wrong target audience market or targeting, or just the way you set up the accounts, which isn't quite working correctly. Um, and in future videos, we'll go through different things around the conversion optimization and making really, really sort of nuanced changes which have really big impacts. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna log into um, one of our accounts and I'm gonna show you exactly how this data can be interpreted to see whether it's good or whether it's bad. So hold on a second. So we're in this account, which is relatively new. It's been about £27,000. Um, and there's a lot of different things going on here. And you can see in this category, we've had, we spent about £14,000. Let's go see what's going on here. So there's a lot of things we can see down here, a lot of different types of campaign. But let's have a little look at this first one. And we did this video a long time ago. And we spent about... £6,000 in total on this video on a B2B audience and it's about how we do LinkedIn or it's how we do link building for B2B companies and the main con we want to see here is we can see this ad creative here and we can see this video and there's lots of different default performances and you can see performance is the top one and the default one that comes up so you've got spend how many leads so how many high intent leads it got for us what was the cost per result um, this one was a LinkedIn lead form the clicks the average click through rate which again isn't that high but let's keep going. Average CPMs so of cost per thousand views, average CPC 366, which isn't too bad. Now, the one I really like looking at oh, is this was a video. So we did this video and this was around, yeah, B2B SEO case studies. The engagement here was really good. Lots of comments, some shares. It worked out quite well as a concept for us. Very simple video, did it very quickly. Um, funny background and it just kind of captured the imagination of a lot of people that are trying to build links for b2b for the sake of seo and if we go across here there's lots of different ones you can see like delivery what i'd say here's frequency you want to try and keep this uh frequency you want to try and keep this around three to five so what this means is the people that saw this ad in its lifetime saw on average about just under four times per person it's probably quite high but it was doing quite well so we thought we'd push it a bit more so as soon as this frequency goes over um four or five it'll start then just appearing all the time people will start getting annoyed with it you need to refresh that content to start educating and creating demand for your offering so this is probably about right um, you then have engagements. So you can see how many people left reactions, comments, shares. So it's really good indicative stuff around how well your campaign is going. So top 2.3% engagement rate, which I think is okay for this type of content. Um, conversions and leads, self-explanatory. So how many leads, a lot of this stuff will show you um, in the performance one, but we can see we've got total uh, lead gen form opens. Um, uh, 938 so the com completion rate when actually someone clicks on the form was about 6.82 percent which is really good this is the one good thing about lead gen forms is the fact that you probably get a much higher conversion rate through the website but through the website you probably get slightly more serious buyers because they've gone through many more hoops to get in contact so pros and cons like i mentioned and i'm not gonna go through all of these because there's a lot more but let's go look at video and this is the cool one is it actually shows you that even though the average click-through rate was 0.59%. Over showing and having over 300,000 impressions, we had a total completion rate of a, how long is this video? This video is ooh, four minutes, 46 seconds long. And we had 1,459 people complete this video, which is a 1.46% conversion rate, or conversion rate completion rate. And the crazy thing about that is this beats any click-through rate. And would I rather someone click on our site and in a lot of cases bounce or skim read a landing page copy? Or would I rather someone watch four minutes plus of a highly informative video of how we've won awards, how we 
go through our process of building really good links, which have actually made a really real world impact on business bottom line. And the answer is I'd much rather spend my money on the consumption of video. And while everyone's going, we need to create short form videos, which everyone's going to watch because they're snappy in the feed. In B2B, a lot of the time, it's, you know, a lot of the stuff is confusing to some of your target audience market, especially in the software and tech space. So it may be worth spending a bit more time and articulating what it is your company does how it solves that problem in the market, how potentially you guys can bridge the gap to work together, some use cases, some thought leadership, and make sure that if you're amplifying it, then you're just getting good consumption. Because if I'm matching it with a great audience, have a great bit of content, then you're going to see leads coming through a very good CPA like we have. And this is just first touch point in a lot of cases. This is the first time someone's seen our ad, they'll watch it and they'll get in contact. The amount of people who watch this video go away for a few weeks, maybe see one or two more of our videos, then come through our form through direct search and say, saw your videos on LinkedIn, by our attribution on HubSpot, for example, saying they came through and found us via organic, which again, we need to ask them where they're coming from because LinkedIn's doing all the heavy lifting and organic may be getting the praise. So self-attribution is very important, but again, a very different topic than what we're talking about today. So, why I always say video beats images is you can look at consumption through completion rate. And it hasn't gonna be mega high production. It can just be thought leadership content, which hits really hard, which is more content led than production led. Get much more stuff out there. Start saturating your audience with about three frequency per month, which means everyone's seeing it enough times. And then that guides you on how often you should be creating that new creative. Now, the really cool thing I like about videos as well, and this is the final thing I'm gonna to touch on today because I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole, is when someone watches more than a certain percent of your video, you know they're engaged. So you can remarket to these people without them ever leaving the platform. So I can go on matched audiences. I can go on create audiences and go on um, video. And I can call cool, this test again. But I can say anyone who's watched more than 50% of our video, which in that case would have been two minutes plus in the past 90 days, put them into an audience. And in that audience, I can then show more and more content. Yes, there needs to be a lot more uh, content there because the frequency will hit three much quicker. But these people have already seen my content, so I can probably go a bit more like bottom of funnel with them and start talking about use cases, how we work with clients, costs, all that stuff, which is gonna push them towards having demand for what we offer, educating them on why they may need us, how other people have used us in the industry and start creating that FOMO to say that we've done really good jobs over here. You jump on the bandwagon because we can help you too because we, we know this space really well. And it just, it works really nicely and you can then create an audience and send it automatic emails, which again were one of the types of posts, um, a conversational ad, which I touched on earlier. Um, and you can then scale up your inbound marketing creative video with your outbound. And while images and carousels do work really well and have their place and should definitely supplement a campaign, videos for us have always found the hardest hitting. They're the highest barrier to entry. When you do them well, they really work. But again, imagine seeing an Im uh, a video in your feed, which educates, builds trust, shows credentials versus static image ad, which again, tells you what they do, may show you some um, are they results, case studies, features, which is great. And you will convert a selection of those people and educate them, but you can do it at scale with video. If you wanna get good success with LinkedIn ads, targeting the right audience is very much the beginning, making sure that you can create content, which hits home with that audience is the second thing or second part of the component, which allows you then to make sure that you're actually getting um, the results you need. Hope you guys found that useful today. Would love to hear in the comments of any LinkedIn campaigns you guys have created recently, any things that you found today interesting, any things that you thought you know you weren't quite sure of, or any things that you thought were just plain wrong. Feel free to hit me up. You can contact me at ben at session-media.com or you can comment below um, or you can message me on LinkedIn, such as Ben Brown on LinkedIn. So hope you enjoyed today. Um, I'll have a video very soon around some of the optimizations which we mentioned. And until next time, guys, hope you have a great week.